God began to show him a dream. He saw this red moon at night in this dream. So when he saw this red moon, he said he saw, he saw poles. These poles, on top of them, there was these pastors as well as Christian saints who were all actually having axes. And then they tried to take these axes and then throw these axes to the moon. But now, instead of these axes reaching the moon, they actually began to fall back. So these people were doing this continuously for a long time to a point that many of them felt tired and then they began to sleep on these poles. I wanted to picture a long pole and then a, a, a person on top of it. It says he saw under, under on the ground below these poles there were actually dark spirits that were actually trying to reach out to these pastors and then they were trying to reach out to these saints who were actually throwing axes to this moon these spirits were actually able to climb and then actually when they reached these pastors or these individual believers he heard screams in this dream he actually heard screams when he heard the screams others were saying miscar miscarriage others were saying uh, you know uh, addictions in the church others were actually screaming and speaking about children's pastors leaving and then God began to speak to him and God told him he said do you let's talk about occultism in the church in 1908 John Gillick as well as his friend came to South Africa and then they began a work in a ministry that would later be called apostolic faith mission story goes that during that time of John Gillick we know as well as F.F. F. Bosworth as well as William Brenham that each time they came to South Africa they actually did not segregate every person would actually come where the whites and blacks they would actually be in the same place so it had all these uh, different ethnicities in one place so the story actually goes in how that after John G. Lake left for America so it was predominantly white uh, led in 1948 the National Party would introduce what would be known as apartheid policy during this time now there would be a great segregation between whites and blacks in South Africa so it was at this moment that the apostolic faith mission under the white leadership began to actually separate itself from the black community. This meant that black people were actually severed from fellowship. It would mean that they would actually have to find their very own structure in terms of spirituality. The interesting part then now begins in that black people actually, because they didn't have the text as well as the teachings. Here in Africa, we know that black people are more tuned to spirituality, mysticism, while on the other hand, we know that white people just love knowledge. So what happened was this now, that when black people were separated from that church of apostolic faith mission, they, so they began to actually follow spirituality, while on the other hand, the white folks were actually the ones that were more sound and were building themselves up doctrinally. So this, I'm not encouraging the work of apartheid in that we do, we do know that the church cannot grow without love. We know then that when our black people were actually uh, separated from the apostolic faith mission, then they would actually go on to fellowship in open lands, open fields, mountains, you know, uh, different fields. So what happens in this is that our people did not have the text or scripture reading or sound doctrine. So what they had was only spiritis spiriticism. Remember that John G. Lake actually came up with the move from America, which was 1901 under William Seymour. Under William Seymour, it was introduced, God used the black guy in America to actually bring back the work of the Holy Spirit, which was Pentecostalism, the speaking of tongues, the baptism of the Holy Spirit through the speaking of tongues. Then John G. Lake, under one of the students or the person that actually caught fire from this work of William Seymour, which was actually called Panam. So he was baptized under the Holy Spirit and then he began to speak in tongues. John G. Lake had actually a profound ministry when it came to the supernatural the healings of people and that we do know that there are documents in Spokane his city there was recorded over 250,000 miracles and healings that took place when this followed after his speaking in tongues so he came to South Africa in 1908 to actually bring out the fire which was the apostolic faith mission so the black people actually did catch the fire as well as the white folks in the apostolic faith mission that came with John G. Lake. They did catch the fire and then began to speak in tongues and have the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit and experience the person of the Holy Spirit in a new level they've never experienced before. So now that black people were actually severed from the church which was apostolic faith mission and that white people remained. So white people actually began to also continue in the work of the Holy Spirit as well as the sound doctrine. But sound doctrine to them was of key priority. 
voting. Whilst on the other hand, black people now, in that they did not have sound doctrine, they were left to actually have their own fellowships in open fields and all of that, which is what today we know where we see black people actually fellowshipping in open fields. This is where this movement began. Even Shembe, this is where actually they accumulated such type of uh, fellowships. So black people now did not have sound teaching, but the only thing they have was the move of the spirit. And that now, when they had the move of the spirit, it went on to be excessive to a point now that black people and black churches were more led, or black fellowship was more led by what we would call a higher and extreme level of prophecies, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, gift of prophecies, speaking of tongues, without the guidance or without the need for scriptures. So in this time, this was when it was in Introduced, this thing began to evolve. It evolved to spiritualism that the text was not there, that the word of God was not there anymore. So spiritualism began to take place. This was when black people now had to have actually specific uniforms. So different sects began to actually grow from this black society movement. And then this is where many of them had uniforms and then they had robes. As then I'll put in pictures for you to see the type of a thing I'm talking about. And from then on, a lot of them actually began to incorporate what you'd call traditional worship in it, which is what many people would define today as African spirituality, the ancestry, the worship of the ancestors. This is where it was also incorporated, where people were now worshiping God as well as their ancestors. So in this now, I'm actually trying to show you something. There's this saying that goes to say that because Careful that you don't have the wedge too much that you actually dry up or that you have the spirit, the spirit too much that you actually blow up. So you need a balance in terms of the weight as well as the spirit. Now, in my point today, I actually want to focus in this background that we have as Christians. Many of us, people like me, we did get saved from this uh, experience or background of Sangomas where we came into Christ and then accepted him as the Lord and Savior. But you find that our minds were not renewed in terms of the word of God. So I actually titled this video Occultism in the Church because the word occultism or occult comes from the Latin word which means secret knowledge, phenomenon, or supernatural so this is what it actually means so in many of us is that today in the church there's teachings teachings that are actually secret to each denomination and you find that they cannot actually be founded from the knowledge of scripture whenever it comes to the scripture you find that it has to be violated to accommodate this teaching the modern church is far from the church of the holy spirit a lot of people I know that they judge the church or maybe the work of the Holy Spirit with what actually they see with their physical eyes. As long as they see a movement in the flesh, then many people say that the Holy Spirit is there. I'll give you an example. It was not long ago, about four to three years ago, when a prominent Christian pastor woman actually began to do something. She's in a television and she's given so much in terms of deliverance here in South Africa. She actually took out her... Um, envelopes and then when she took out envelopes she actually handed them to the church and then she began to hand each envelope she prayed for to individual people and then when she handed these envelopes people actually began to manifest in the spirit not in demons not in demonical manifestation but in the spiritual manifestation when she gave people and then they touched these envelopes the power of God hit them and a lot of them began to fail and then they realized there was the power of God a power of God began to take over I was actually trying to look for the video for you on YouTube but I couldn't find it and then a lot of people began to express the power of God when they were handed these envelopes so these envelopes had in them a special seed offering that they were supposed to give now here's the interesting part about seven days later the next follow the next following Sunday the woman now called out people who actually took these envelopes to bring them uh, to the front because they had pledged in to actually bring in seed offerings now, the majority of the people that took the envelopes, the people that brought back those envelopes were about, amounted to about 30%. The 70% did not bring them back. So the woman was agitated that was used by God, this pastor woman. And then she began to chase these people out of the church who took the envelopes and who did not bring them back. So the question now leaves with you and I to say, was it really the power of God that was at work during the time when they were actually collecting these envelopes? Or was it just the emotions? So for me, I actually believe that it was actually the power of God, but not fully the power of God. You might find that the power of God was about 20% involved. Then 80% was human emotion that was involved in this.
So with what I'm trying to say to you is that I made a video. I made a video, most of you have watched it, concerning how the anointing can be manipulated. So my point in this is that many of us would actually look at the move of what's happening in the church and we would say the Holy Spirit is there. And it doesn't matter after that what the minister says to you, even if this thing is manipulative or it's outside of the word of God. As long as people would see people delivered, healed, and moving in miracles, do you know that the work of God or the power upon a specific minister does not leave even though they're actually walking in sin or you find that they are no more walking in God's uh, prescribed uh, method of ministry which is the scriptures do you know that the power of God doesn't normally leave them but it continues so you cannot judge a person because of their casting out devils because of their healing the sick because they're speaking in tongues because they can prophesy and you say the ministry is all right no that is far from the truth because the Bible says to us the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance when God gives something he does not pull it back so you find that grace is what makes it to be that whenever a person is in sin they still see the power of God moving. So in these children of God, I'm trying to explain to you in simple terms to say, let's not judge ministers because we see what we call the work of the Spirit at work. Because many of what is happening today is occultism that has actually been introduced in the church. Let me give you an example. So many of us, we come from this background where we came from this Zionist movement. So the Zionist movement or Zionist churches is what we classify as what I just introduced. These black people were severed from the AFM and then they had to have separate fellowship. And because of that, they had an extreme spiritualism, spiritual experiences to a point that they actually went on to leave the word of God behind and then they had to include the ancestral worship as well. So this went on to introduce what we call the Zionist churches here in South Africa and it was a result of that where we find many people now that they are still going from there. So many of us will come from that background. So when we come from that background you realize that our minds were not renewed or properly renewed when we came into Christendom when we were born again. I'm going to give you a proper example of what I mean by that. So you find for example that what we used to have there so the Zionist churches would you find within the pastor who's leading there is actually a person who is a Sangoma or maybe a well-known Sangoma or even if it's a Sangoma but it's a Sangoma and it actually has a lot of Sangomas in it because it has a mixture of the worship of God as well as the worship of the ancestors so we know that in Christianity that is forbidden according to the scriptures of the Bible. These uh, Zionist churches had what you would call consultation as well as what Sangomas have today is consultation so it has a consultation fee. A consultation in the previous videos, I've actually made an example of it that excuse, in the Sangoma industry that is actually called the Ndau spirit is called Ugufemba. In Isikosa it's called Ugubula. It's where you'd actually go to a person that has the ability to see that is a medium or a spiritist and then this person would actually conjure a specific spirit to actually begin to ask or consult on your behalf concerning what is actually happening in their lives and then the spirit would bring in a message to this person who's a media to say okay this person is actually having this issue and then this person needs to do this and that in order for this to be fixed for example maybe sometimes Sangomas would say it's because your ancestors have actually turned against you because of you did this and this and then there would be a cleansing and a remedy for this for the person to actually be reconciled and then that that is how it goes. Now, a lot of believers look into the New Testament with the eyes of the Old Testament. Jesus Christ said that you cannot pour new wine on old wine skins. You cannot use the old covenant in the light of the new. The book of Hebrews 8, 13, the Bible says that the New Testament made the Old Testament obsolete. When I mean wh What I mean by this is that it doesn't mean that we don't have to read the old. We have to read it in the light of the new. So what happens is there's a scripture that tells us that Saul lost donkeys and then a servant actually encouraged him that they go to a man of God which was nearer to that city. And then when they had actually given him a seed, he began to actually prophesy and give them a word concerning where the donkeys were. Now let's look at the, uh, let's put a juxtaposition between the old and the new covenant and see how this would go about. Now in the old covenant, remember that God had actually few people that he had actually set his spirit upon. This would be 
this would be a king priest prophet or maybe a layman some of the people who began to deliver the israelites like in the book of judges so these were the only people that had the holy spirit upon them the rest of the nation was left alone they had no holy spirit so if people needed to consult god they needed a prophet or someone who actually has the spirit which would actually be a priest and then a priest would take a urim and a thummim and then give them a word from god but now in the new testament that doesn't go because the bible says i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and then god begins to speak and he says no one will tell his neighbor and says let's go to the temple because everyone will have the spirit of god what this means is simply this now in the new testament no one can actually come to a prophet and say i came to consult concerning a matter in my life why is because of the bible says all that are led by the spirit they are the sons of god so which means if you say that you are a son of god you need to be led by the spirit not some but all so which means all the church is actually meant to come up to this position the book of first corinthians 12 it tells us it says the gifts of the spirit we're talking about word of wisdom word of knowledge gift of prophecy speaking in tongues and all of this now speaking in tongues you realize this dimension of tongues i'm gonna make a video of them and then there's these ones which you call diverse kinds of so the diverse kinds of tongues they need an interpretation not just any tongue speaking because paul says i will speak in tongues and i will pray in my own understanding so we see that this is actually led by the choice of paul that and then we also find this in the book of acts 2 where the bible speaks to us it says they began to speak in other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance so who began not the holy spirit but them so it's a it's a point of will to speak in tongues so now diverse kinds of tongues need an interpretation so there's a difference there so we spoke about the gifts of the spirit all these are administered by the same spirit according as to the will of the spirit not the will of the prophet yes the bible says the, the spirit of the prophet are, are subject so objection it means submitting to so in context of what I'm saying is that God cannot force you to actually bring in a prophetic word to someone if you are not willing. But then the Bible tells us now, it says that these gifts are all led as according to the will of the Spirit. So it means I cannot conjure up a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom or descending of spirits according to my own will. I have to depend on the Holy Spirit to actually give it to me and then I begin to prophesy. Even prophets need to know that. Because a lot of times many people, I made a video, remember that it will appear on the screen concerning how that many people the, it will, the link will also be on the description how that many people would actually go on and then begin to prophesy with familiar spirits and that they would actually conjure processes that are not heavenly ordained and then they begin to bring in the spirit of lies and then they open a door for the enemy and then the familiar spirits begin to hang in and come inside and then now they begin to see things in people's life such as I once made a, a, an example in this video how that one prophet actually spoke to a friend of Kenneth Hagen and says there's a ring in actually your office this ring has been given by your great grandmother and no one knows about it not even the minister's wife knew about it and the prophet says God says you give it to me and the person began to give to the prophet and the prophet took the ring and then he went on he began to sleep with a lot of girls and all of that so familiar spirits when they begin to enter into a prophet they actually begin to mislead this person to live a dirty life and then they introduce such things as lust and then you find that the prophet is sleeping with a lot of people in the church why is because of they open for these spirits when they actually conjure prophecies when the Holy Spirit didn't say anything. It's when I'm talking about to say that the gifts of the Spirit all hinge on the Holy Spirit. They depend on Him. You cannot just conjure up a word when the Holy Spirit didn't speak. So this actually used to happen to us during the time when we were back then in the years when we were under the Zionist churches, when we were under all these uh, traditional uh, you know, roots, we would actually have this mentality where we would actually just begin to actually conjure up. A person would come for consultation and then would conjure up the spirit and then begin to speak but now in the new testament with the aura and the authority and the glory of the new testament glory you find that that is not actually allowed we need to depend on the power of the person of the holy spirit to actually begin to bring out prophecies that are in line with the text and with the scriptures so this is the reason why you find that a lot of people actually now begin to miss the mark and is uh, instead when it comes to the fellowship with the lord so it was at this part that many people do not understand that now there's occultism that began to creep in into the church. The occultism that began to creep in is that a lot of people now have to have consultation fees in order for them to actually begin to access specific men of God. They have to have a, a specific price money paid to in order for this man to begin to prophesy to them. And in this, do read and then you understand that in Matthew the Lord began to speak and he says freely you have received, therefore freely give back. So it means that all of these gifts came to us by grace. So we actually need to minister them by grace. 
grace as well. So I do not advocate for people that abuse men of God in this. L let me just give you an example. When a person says they are coming with consultation fee, so they are actually buying the spirit. You realize that what this happened is we are taking that which we learned from our Zionist uh, churches from the past and then we bring it back to our salvation. So you realize that what we're doing is that many of us were not renewed in our mind when we got saved. So what we're doing is that we're taking what we have, which is from the New Testament, and then we're mixing it with what is coming from our tradition. And then we are actually trying to invoke these spirits back into the church of Jesus Christ. As a result now, this is why you find that there's teachings that are taught today. Paul said something. He said, in the latter days, many will follow teachings that are taught by demons. What he means by this is the teachings that are taught by demons. This is an example that I'll give you. I had an experience back in the years. There was this girl who was called Nongoliso. So this girl came out. Okay, I, I just need to declare this as I go on. That there's an anointing to heal back pains. There's an anointing to heal back pains as I speak at this moment. Have your faith and then release yourself in the spirit to, really, to, to receive. So there was this girl that came during the time when I was doing my high school toward the end of my high school. So these videos or DVDs, they went all over. So it was audios where this girl was actually speaking how that she was saved from the kingdom of darkness. And then she began to teach a lot of things. How that ladies do not need to have braided hairs because braided hairs have demons in them. Amongst one of those teachings, she actually taught that how that they... She actually taught how that they devil worshippers would get into rich tail shops and then begin to pour in spirits, you know, into uh, 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 butters, you know, the butters that we use for bread and then they used to actually pour spirits into them as well as food. And then this girl actually encouraged people that whenever they actually get to, before they eat any type of food that they bought, they need to actually plead the blood of Jesus over it. So I am coming into that now. And then she began to speak about certain clothes that actually had devils in them. I'm not denying that certain companies are actually falling under these demonic companies or Illuminatis. I am not denying that. But I just want to give an example. In all these things that these devil worshippers begin to speak, there's one thing they leave out, that money also falls under this system as well. Do you know that my wife and I actually have had someone coming from the United States and then these people began to give us they sold into our ministry, they sold dollars and when we're looking at one dollar we begin to see that it has a pyramid as well as the third eye but I'll tell you something, Christians won't stop using that because they say the money has actually a symbol of Satan they'd rather say everything, oh we won't do bread and hair but they will use that money to buy everything instead of the bread and hair, when it comes to money they'd rather say the blood of Jesus but anything else they say, no we don't use this because it's devil worshipping, we don't drive BMWs devil worshipping and all of that. Anything you do when your conscience is actually correct or maybe it's full of light. When your conscience is clear, do it. But if your conscience is condemned, which means that your faith is weak, then it means don't do it because when anything is done without faith, is actually sin. So what I mean by this is that this lady began to spread all of this. So we had a lot of ladies in churches that were condemning others that were doing their hairs to be braided. Well, and then others used the book of Peter. You need to understand Peter in context. Peter was actually speaking that a lot of women tend to focus on the outward beauty instead of the internal beauty. If you're focusing on the internal beauty more than the outward beauty, there's nothing wrong with the woman beautifying herself, putting on pleasant makeup, as long as that thing has nothing to do with offending other believers. And and then it is done in the spirit of goodwill. It is fine. So this lady began to spread this. So we see now what Paul was saying to say in the latter days there will be teachings that are taught by demons. So you see now that this is was another type of it. Let me give an example. Do you know that there is no need? I've heard a lot of Christians who have come to, the, to their presence and then you realize whenever they prayed for food, they say, we plead the blood of Jesus. We pray for the blood of Jesus. Some will say we sprinkle the blood. Some will say we sprinkle fire. What does the scripture say? God anticipated all these things and these errors that they would happen in the last days. That any food that is received with thanksgiving is sanctified. What does that mean? It means if my family and I sit down, it's what we normally do every night, and we say, Thank you, Father, for the food you provide. The reason why food was prayed for, it was not that it was prayed for protection. It was that it was prayed for in a heart of thanksgiving, that God you've provided and then we are grateful. So that is what it means to say any food received with thanksgiving. So we'd actually sit at the table of feasting with my family and we say, thank you, Father, for the food you provide. We receive with gladness in Jesus' name. We don't need to say we plead the blood of Jesus upon this food. So just by me thanking God for the provision, the Holy Spirit sanctifies that food. There's no need for me to do that. So you see that in the church now we had teachings that are actually 
uh, given by demons do not actually encourage casting out of devils and then interviewing them recently we're casting out a very aggressive demon in one church another woman had it i don't have time to interview this because why jesus never did and then you realize the reason why is because of a lot of teachers that are taught in the church are demon are teachings of devils now we're coming to that a person interviews a demon how did you get into this woman and this demon will say i get according to this woman because she was eating rama she bought rama without praying for it and then you realize the men of god instead of ministering the way they turn and then they teach on this and then they make this thing a doctrine when it's not even a doctrine so we're speaking up about these things now so you find that these things began to spread so much in the church and then they became a bondage to so many people even for an example now you find that demons when they speak inside of uh, through many believers and then when they've been cast out they're interviewed how did you get into this person well we made there was an evil altar made by the aunt and then believers now start to pray and then they have night prayers every weekly concerning evil altars come on now there is no scripture that actually encourages that we are not encouraged to be on the offensive side but we are encouraged to be on the defensive side so because the demon manifested and said there's an altar called an evil altar made and then it has this person's name so you find a preacher spends spends an entire hour teaching about evil altars something that is not even sanctioned and something that is does not even appear in the word of god i'm about to get to that end example so there's a prophet his name is actually john paul jackson so this prophet he actually had something an experience he says that he had one minister call him and he says can you please pray for us because of our daughter actually ran from home this is a pastor another pastor calls and says can you please pray for us we're having miscarriages in our church and then the other one calls and says can you please pray for us we are having this issue in our church so there were three prayer requests from three different ministries and then he began to pray and then he says when it began to pray god began to show him a dream he saw this red moon at night in the stream so when he saw this red moon he said he said he saw poles these poles on top of them there was these pastors as well as christian saints who were all actually having access and then they tried to take these access and then throw these access to the moon but now instead of these access reaching the moon they actually began to fall back so these people were doing this continuously for a long time to a point that many of them felt tired and then they began to sleep on these poles I wanted to picture a long pole and then a, a, a person on top of it. it says he saw under under on the ground below these poles there were actually dark spirits that were actually trying to reach out to these pastors and then they were trying to reach out to these saints who were actually throwing axes to this moon and then he says when these people began to sleep on top of these poles these poles actually were pulled down and then when they were going down now these spirits were actually able to climb and then actually when they reached these pastors or these individual believers he heard screams in these dreams and then when he had in this dream he actually heard screams when he had screams others were saying Miscar- miscarriage others were saying uh, you know uh, addictions in the church others were actually s- screaming and speaking about children's pastors leaving and then god began to speak to him and god told him he said do you see that this th- what this moon is this moon represents the devil so this actually exists they represent what the church calls spiritual warfare the more they're trying to actually hit the enemy it is when they start this uh, cycle it is good that they do not stop because many of them when they start this Now look at the way to when they start this it is good that they do not stop because many of them when they stop now and then fall tight because as time goes by every person burns out in everything you do you get to a point where you are burned out so when they burn out now that is where these spirits actually now begin to give an heaven upper end and then they begin to actually attack them So for example many people will just start something that God did not even sanction and then they say let's pray against miscarriages in the ministry. God was showing this minister to say many people when they begin these prayers now they begin to experience these attacks because of the enemy begins to actually find an open door. In that now if they begin this teach these prayers they shouldn't stop. For example now people beginning with this it's 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 a new thing it's all over where they are praying against evil altars. They praying against evil altars it's something that is not even sanctioned in the word of God and there's a repetition in the church and then you wonder why in the church every person actually is more bound. This is another sign that I'll give you to see churches that actually have to do with occultism in them or maybe of them many of them are actually practicing occultism and away. You find that whenever you were sitting and then you were not fellowshiping your life was clear you had a lot of peace but when you went into this ministry to now you have a repetition of fear you are more conscious of the devil than before you have so much fear and 
and then you have so much prophecies that actually align you to a lot of fear and a lot of need to strive and fight a lot you know that the work of the holy spirit in christ is actually finished we're not fighting to try to gain victory but instead we're fighting out of victory there's a difference there and a lot of people you find that their churches are actually full of bondage and fear in them the bible says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty you find that in many churches today there's a problem whereby whenever they are trying to pray uh, there's always uh, something that is negative trying to come against them when they are done with this there's another prophecy of something that is negative following and then there's just a rep- the work of God is actually a, a, a sign of peace in it. You find that there's actually a tune of victory every time. There's not a repetition of always having to fight, having to pray against this. Yesterday, there was praying against spiritual husbands. The next day, there's praying against evil archers. The next day, there's praying against generational cases. No, the work of the Lord has been finished in the cross. You just need to rest in that. The only time you need to pray against this thing is when the Lord reveals it to you. And someone is saying, yes, my prophet will be revealing it to me me sometimes do you know that the prophet can be manifesting in a work whereby they actually prophesying a lot in a familiar spirit how do you know it's when the prophecy brings in bondage instead of peace it's a prophecy that brings peace you know that it is comes from god so because of this you find a lot of people in the churches they are lord there's they are stuck in a lot of ways they are always going through hurdles always reaching out but never attaining it's just all of this cycle and then you find in the church that we have so much fear concerning witchcraft the, the modern church is just not the biblical church anymore a lot of christians are so conscious they know a lot about the work of the devil they watch videos on youtube there are thousands when it comes to the work of the devil they are up to date with what the devil is doing in this season that they do not know what god is capable of the modern church is so focused on the devil and his power focus on evil altars instead of the victory of christ there's so much fear for witchcraft now so blasphemy of the holy spirit in the church that's happening today it's people feeling that what jesus did on the cross is not enough it needs man's effort to complement it to supplement it to this is why you find a lot of people have been praying but they praying amiss because a lot of people are praying to actually try to move god instead of understanding that god has already moved i'll make a video about that so the bible says to us blessed be god who hath it's a past tense blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places not who is trying to so for everything that you need has been supplied in christ before you were even saved god had supplied for it the only thing that paul said to the ephesians and to the philippians it says i pray that your eyes be opened to see because everything has been provided to say to see the glorious riches in the saints everything is on the inside of you you are not trying to move God to get your healing. Your healing is inside of your spirit. You just need to develop your spiritual man to begin to manifest this outwardly. You are not trying to get God to move for your breakthrough. Everything has actually been moved. What we need to do is actually having a mindset to say, God, open our eyes. And then at the same time, we're trying to fight the enemy. But now we need to fight according to the given revelation of God to say, God has revealed that the enemy is actually holding you in this space. And then we have to pray in that. That's why a lot of times we need to pray in tongues because when we pray in our understanding, we tend to sin instead of praying out of faith. You find a lot of believers, you've prayed for this person in this situation and the next week they come, they want you to pray for it. You realize they're working so much in doubt. Instead of just standing and saying, God, I know that we've prayed for this and that you are at work. I know, even though it's not manifesting yet, but I praise you so that believers learn to pray in faith. So you find that there's a repetition in the church. We're always trying to attain but never reaching and then you find that this is the reason now i want to actually drop something again that is more important to you do you know that if you actually in a wrong ministry someone that is actually moving in the spirit bound by occultism or this knowledge from the past or maybe bound by familiar spirits or churches that are actually bound by these demons evil altars and all of that it's a matter of time before your life is held on by stagnancy let me give you an example Paul speaks to the Philippians. When he speaks to them, he says, chapter 4, verse 15. Now you Philippians know that also in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but only you. He speaks concerning financial giving. For Verse 16, for even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. And then verse 17, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account so giving even in the new testament it has its blessings let's not lie to ourselves and then verse the 18 instead giving out of will not out of necessity and then verse 18 says indeed i have all and abound i am full having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you 
a sweet smelling aroma an acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to god then verse 19 is my point i had to read this in context verse 19 and my god shall supply all your needs or your need according to his riches and glory by christ jesus it says my god so paul what is saying here is saying so the grace or the anointing upon my life will actually be at work in your life so many people today they actually muzzling ministers so you find what this is is that people you find which they actually in their church they are only receiving spiritual meal but they are not actually partaking in the fruit by giving in in return so you can you're not fully activating a grace in a ministry when you are not partaking in giving so many people then they actually have a mistake then where you find that when they are giving they're giving in wrong ministries some you find that they actually in a ministry that is teaching these things spiritual husband this spiritual husband that you find a person has been dealing with a spiritual husband for 10 years under the same ministry no thing no deliverance no light no no promise of 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 salvation from it you find a person always breaking evil altars every now and then every week they all so what this does is that when because people are actually partaking under this ministry when you give in into a ministry you begin to partake of that grace so you find that a lot of believers as a result they have their life stagnants ministry has a higher rate of divorces the ministry has a higher rate of people who are not working the ministry has a higher rate of businesses that are falling the ministry has a higher rate of people who are stagnant why because of their partaking of a ministry that is actually taught or entangled in bondage sometimes let me just even make it clearer to say a person who's using a familiar spirit even to this day you cannot give to a prophet who just says give a thousand no god is not supposed to tell a prophet in the new testament he's supposed to tell you and then you give the thousand because god has told you so now many people you find that they gave because the prophet manipulated them so you realize that this prophet is functioning with a familiar spirit in the new testament god will never have a minister say god says give a thousand there's no price god will actually have to speak to you directly instead of through that prophet because that prophet says god says you give a thousand and then they do that and then you find that they begin to introduce that spirit that spirit that that oppresses that prophet you find that they have lust in their lives they don't even know it comes from you find that their finances go go south because they've actually partaken into this nasty grace and then you find as well which in their life there's actually a bondage of ceaseless fighting ceaseless and ceasing suffering they are actually more entangled every now and then in a fight now there's there's things in their lives that begin to manifest that they did not have before they are they have so much anger they have so much oppression they are always sick in this ministry never actually getting to be healed because you find that they are partakers of a spirit that is actually that kind so any man of god you partake onto do begin to sit down and then assess that man specifically in doctrine and in biblical soundness because when a man teaches things that are sound teachings then that means which that man is actually on the right track your pastor so i would actually encourage people to leave churches that leave them into bondage leave that church bible says come out of here my people you need to come out of babylonian teachings then you need to seek in a sound biblical teaching ministry because a lot of times you find which your life will be your life will be a measure of the grace you actually sit on so in a lot of times that's how you judge a man of god you judge him by based on a doctrine before a man falls he actually falls in doctrine if you look into the book of galatians the apostles always challenged doctrine before they challenged conduct when jude heard that people were doing things that were nasty to the minister was writing to the Jewish nation he didn't actually fight against their corner he fought against their belief system so when a man of god has a wrong doctrine it's a matter of time before he misses it and before you hear nasty stuff and nasty things that will follow his character so i encourage you therefore to stay away from teachings that actually live in bondage the bible says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty if you are in a ministry that ever makes you feel like you need to fight more every time when you are thinking you are closer you are not closer you are far just know that you are actually in a bondage ministry a ministry that introduced itself to spirits uh, to teachings that are actually produced by seducing spirits or devil teachings that are in them so run away from that ministry now in that now stop again before you even begin to give in to any ministry firstly assess the doctrine and then listen to your spirit but many people are not trained to listen to the spirit then assess the doctrine before you actually begin to give in because 
because when you give in into that ministry, you will partake of the grace that is upon that ministry. If that ministry is like that, always fighting demonic oppression every time, never seeing victory in these arenas, it's what your life will be like. This is like what's happening now. In South Africa, we're actually looking at uh, votes coming on the 29th of May. A lot of believers take these things lightly. Do you know that when you're actually voting for a party that is corrupt, that you partake of that party's sin? of corruption. God holds you responsible and accountable for ever whatever that party does because you voted it consciously. So again, even if you did that ignorantly, God will hold you accountable because why? We need to involve God in how we vote. We look at the party's belief system. We actually begin to take time to fast sometimes and listen if God agrees that we vote for that party. So do you know that God says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge? Just because you don't know something, it doesn't mean you're exempted from uh, paying the penalty. That's what the, that verse says. So we actually need to take part in that. We actually assess all this. Because you vote a part and then it comes into power and then it does a, uh, it does uh, bad things that are contrary to the word of God. God holds you accountable. In the same way, sowing into a ministry that actually diverts from the true sound teaching of the Bible, you actually begin to partake of that ministry's sin. It's the same as a minister, according to the book of Timothy, ordaining someone before they are read in ministry, and then they begin to do sin. The Bible says you partake of their sins because you ordained them. Do subscribe so that whenever I drop a video, you actually might be blessed. As we, you, uh, as we look forward to you learning, tell us how these messages bless us. Do interact with us. Bless you.